All right. I got experienced scouters here, so this will be a little easier, but um, we'll start with who I am because none of you know me. All right. So here's my contact information. Uh, feel free to call me if you have any questions or you want to talk about planning or anything else. Um, all right. So before we start, I think it's important to review what our aims of scouting are, um, character development, leadership development, citizenship training, and personal fitness. So when you think about an annual plan, <laughs> we should be incorporating our aims into that annual plan. Um, and then I'm going to give you the, the methods of scouting because this is really bread and butter what an annual plan should include at some point. Um, our ideals are the scout oath, law, model, slogan, patrols. Um, we all know what a patrol is. Outdoor programs, advancement, association with adults, personal growth, leadership development, and uniform. So annual planning really should encompass these things. Now, you can't go to your troop and say, hey, here's what we have to do. We have to, you know, have patrols, we have to have outdoor programs, we have to have advancement, we have to have association with adults, we have to have personal growth, we have to have leadership development, we have to have uniform because they're all going to go, Bleh. <laughs> we just want to have fun, right? So our goal as, a, as an adult leader is to help them make a plan that incorporates this without them maybe so to, without them focusing on it solely. All right. Um, next, patrol system, patrol method. Um, Baden Powell said it's not one method which scouting can be carried on. It's the only method. So that's really easy in a large troop. It gets a little tight in a smaller troop, but it's still possible. Um, so one patrol is still a patrol. It's just a little different dynamic. All right. So Cub Scouting versus Boy Scouting. So this is important when we're talking annual planning because in Cub Scouts, our, our Cub leaders or our Akalas are the ones who make the plan in scouts psa <laughs> the youth are making the plans and the adults are guiding okay so when we go to make this plan it's important that we do that um we we, we empower the the scouts to make decisions make plans and work on it so i'm going to kind of go through a next slide here um how do we get to be youth led and it's it's a, a made-up thing but i always said youth led is perfect right so no, no snickering yet from, from all of us experienced scouters, but here we go. You know, we're going to use the patrol method. We're going to enable them to make decisions. We're going to respect their ideas and decisions. We're going to find remedy, not fault. So what I mean by that is it's very easy to say, no, we can't do that. Or no, no, you know, and that doesn't help a scout, right? Or we're not going to sit on the sidelines and say, well, we tried that. Or, um, you guys don't have the skills to do that, right? So we're going to find remedy where we're going to give them, you know, guidance and say, hey, I think canoeing in the boundary waters is a great idea, all right? We're going to probably need a little bit of practice before we do that. How can we accomplish that? How long will it take us to do that, right? We're going to find those, those ways to let them accomplish what they want without pointing out just that it won't work, all right? Um, expect best efforts, right? Um, if you have a low bar, everybody will meet it, right? We want to push our youth to to expand themselves and to to give their best best efforts. All right, we're going to challenge them and we're going to trust them, right? And that that sometimes is really hard, especially for new new parents, new leaders. Is is we want them to succeed, but we also aren't ready to let them try things on their own. So those are all kind of little little misnomers. So the next slide is kind of funny because it's you know. Youth led isn't always smooth. I can tell you how many times it's not been smooth, right? But it doesn't mean it's not right. Um, and and with scouts and annual planning, we want to accomplish a goal. And sometimes how we plan to do it and how a scout plans to do it are a little different. So we got to be careful. So how do you do an annual plan? Well, the first thing you need for annual planning is you need your patrol leaders council, right? So we need a purpose, which in our case is going to be the annual plan. And then there's a who, when, why, and how. So we're going to go into that a little bit. So the purpose, you know, the Patrol Leaders Council plans the yearly troop program at the annual troop program planning conference. Now, um, I'll go into who's at that as we go through this. But in addition to that annual planning conference, we need to have our PLC meeting monthly, bi-monthly. Um, and it's not always easy. Trust me, I've had many struggles with this. Um, but it, it's to keep us on that annual plan, right? Because if you keep changing the annual plan, what's the purpose of having the annual plan? Um, you can make adjustments, don't get me wrong, but 
But if you don't do anything on your annual plan, then it really wasn't a good plan. Okay, so the difference between what they pick and what we may pick can be the difference of them seeing it as exciting versus boring, right? Um, we can pick fun activities, don't get me wrong, but sometimes if, if they're not invested in it, it just, it won't, it won't seem fun to them. Okay, so who's at the PLC? Our SPL, uh, Senior Patrol Leader, our Patrol Leader, our Assistant Senior Patrol Leader, and our Troop Guide um, usually attend. This is all subject to your troop and how your structure is built, all right? Um, also there should be the scribe. Um, most troops, the scribe is just a note taker and a record keeper in the PLC, but that doesn't mean that they can't vote if your troop elects it, all right? Instructors may be there, um, quartermaster. Um, those are usually probably not, well, they might be for the annual planning, meaning if you're like, hey, do we have enough tents to do this trip or that? Um, but they're kind of, they're kind of, they may or may not be there, all right? And you can add other leaders, leadership positions as needed, so, okay. So who's the who's the non youth you non youths the non youth at the PLC or the annual planning meeting? Well, hopefully you got your scout master and your assistant scout masters, your committee chair, treasurer, and troop committee members. Now you may not all want to be sitting around the, the 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 planning meeting, but you should all be within earshot of it to try and understand it. Um, and you kind of think of it as as you're the resources that the scouts need to put together the the year. All right. Okay, so when um, we try generally our troop, at least it's an August event, um, this year's been a little off, so we may do it a little earlier, um, kind of a reset because we're kind of refiring up more in-person activities and maybe it's a good time to look at our annual plan and, and maybe do a little bit bigger one. Um, and then your PLC should meet monthly or bi-monthly or as needed. You may say, hey, you know, we've got a lot to cover guys, so we may need a couple PLCs. The beauty of today is we've learned how to use technology so maybe your plcs can be shorter but but virtual okay um and your annual planning meeting could be virtual too if you if you prefer okay why uh why do we do it this way well the troop belongs to the scouts they should take an active role in planning outings meetings and activity gives them buy-in gives them excitement gives them fun right and if we don't have that they're they're just not going to be as engaged in it. So we want them to, to, to own the troop, so to speak, or to at least own, own part of the plan. All right. So how do you do this? Well, each PLC or um, troops should have, have their own rules for a PLC in, in, in place. Um, in my case, I suggest an agenda very strongly. Um, I usually provide a rough agenda to my SPL and then I let him or her in, in, we don't have a girl troop, but if a girl troop were, were here, him or her, the SPL take over and, and cover, cover the, the agenda, all right, that I've given them or add or remove or change items. So that's kind of what we have a little pre, pre-conference discussion and then I turn it loose. Um, so when, you, when you're talking to your SPL or your, your annual planning meeting, what do you need? So, so you need a goal or purpose for the PLC, or in this case, the annual plan, planning meeting. Um, if it were just a regular PLC, you'd throw in your annual plan, right? So that we're following it, we're making sure we're on track. Um, I always throw in meeting plans so that they kind of have the structure there. Um, and then the big things, these these are kind of the keys that that it it's, it's disruptive sometimes um, to have everybody trying to find stuff on their phone. So I like to have our troop calendar. I like to have uh, the pack calendar, if I can get it, or at least to pack important dates, um, a school calendar, right? Because if you're planning, planning a bigger trip, maybe you want to be over, over a school break or vice versa. If you know that attendance is going to be low because it's spring break and everybody's trying to get out of Dodge, well, you, you need to have those things handy, right? Um, council, uh, council events are very important. Um, there's a lot of them. Well, there usually is a lot of them and we want to make sure that, that we're aware of them and we're not planning all of our events at the same time and, and A for resources and B for, for, you know, um, opportunities for our scouts to either participate in the bigger council event or maybe, maybe do some advancement. Um, I throw in sports calendars in there. Um, you know, we live in Western Wisconsin, so you may have a big bears fan in your group, but you know, most, most people, uh, 
would follow around the Packer schedule or Viking schedule on this side of the state. Um, I don't particularly schedule everything around it, but I am aware of it, um, especially big games like a Packers Bears game or a Packers Vikings game. Um, you may just not have attendance or your troop may not care and you don't necessarily need that. Other sports could be could be school sports. It could be just just anything that your youth are involved in. Um, other conflicting events, um, you know, those could be uh, religious holidays, uh, uh, Mother's Day, uh, Father's Day, um, obviously um, Christmas, Easter. Those are pretty, pretty big things, but they're on pretty much every calendar. But but maybe you have some local things that happen, for example, Sturgeon Fest or um, uh, Menominee has, um, ugh, why can't I think of it all of a sudden, Dave? Um, your, your Lions Club Festival thing. Uh, Freedom Fest. Thank you. <laughs> so uh, you got to be aware of, of those things that may be happening in the community that A, may pull your, your, your scouts away or, or B, may, may conflict and, and you want to be part of it. And now all of a sudden you schedule the camp out on Freedom Fest and it's like, oh, you know, how can we make this work? All right. So I usually have a printed copy of that, of at least the troop, the council, um, the school, like vacation calendar. I try to get at least important dates from the pack. I may not have them. Um, and then I give those to the scouts so that they're in front of them. So we're not everybody looking on our phone, trying to figure out what, what the Packer schedule is for next month or, or for the year or those kind of things. All right. So other resources that, that are very helpful. Um, we found that we use like a dry erase white whiteboard calendar. It's like a laminated calendar. It's big and it, it has all 12 months of the year on it. And it's very easy for scouts to visualize what's happening because a lot of times they pick dates or pick things and then they can't see what's happening. Um, you can have just a plain whiteboard that works just as well, you know, and, and list your months and, and stuff on that. But that that calendar kind of puts things into to a global perspective, I guess. Uh, I've also printed them out on paper. Very effective, too, so that um, I like to give the scribe at least at least a paper copy and the and the, the whiteboard copy so we can keep good record. Um, you need your scribe or at least a good note taker. Um, electronic works if they're they're more comfortable using Google Docs. Um, brochures. Um, a lot of times I collect different state park brochures. Um, I collect, you know, uh, well, you don't get them very much anymore, but I, I used to have like some high adventure brochures, um, maybe some council brochures or council things. Even if they're just like a one page hit on something that's happening, it's good to have them in front of them so that they can kind of think a little bit bigger than maybe everything they've always done. Um, and that's kind of sometimes I, I don't you know, you don't want to overwhelm them with 300 choices, but giving them two or three that just kind of kind of poke something in their head is a good way to do it. Um, local camping locations. Um, a lot of times we think Camp Phillips, Camp Brunswick, maybe the local state park like here, it's Lake Wasota. But a lot of times there's other places that are, are pretty, pretty close to home or maybe a little further away, you know, in, in the region here that you could do to change it up. Because one of the things you don't want to do, in my opinion, is every February we go to Fred C. Anderson. Every March we go to Camp Phillips. Every, you know, if you do the same thing every year, um, it loses interest of some scouts as they get older because I've already done that. I don't really want to do that again. Um, and so by, by putting variety in their, in their planning ideas, it helps them. Maps, maps are helpful. Um, usually I have a map of some different camps. So they kind of have an idea of where they could go at those camps. Um, just kind of a good state map to say, Hey, where's this? Although Google map works just as well for how far is it to go to, you know, superior, you know, how many hours drive is it? You know, they may ask a leader, but, you can also say, well, put it in Google Maps and see how far it is. Um, and then we had um, this a couple times, but Jen Lang actually had redone this for us um, with the, the different requirements, a first class, first year kind of schedule. And that helps because it really gives you kind of a breakdown of what you're trying to do um, to get these scouts ready for advancing those, those first year, year and a half. And it's very important now. I'm not going to lie. It's ambitious. I think a little bit to try and get them to first class. Now, I mean the the old the old requirements was was a little easier to get there, but it's good to have those and just put those in front of your 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 youth leaders to say, hey, 
you know, we've got to keep in mind that we need to kind of cover some of this stuff through our annual year. All right. So I created a sample sample agenda um, that could be anything you want, but um, so, you know, normally you have an opening from your SPL. Um, we like to have a little ground rules. Um, I, I like to say, you know, to I discuss it with the SPL beforehand, you know, what are your rules? Do you raise your hand to talk? Do you let everybody talk over the top? You know, when the sign's up, everybody's quiet, you know, uh, how do you how do you transition from one speaker to another? Um, those are just kind of simple rules to create, but they'll help your meeting go a lot so quicker. Um, one of the things that happens in in a lot of scouting events and actual real real world business meetings and you name it is a lot of sidebar discussions, right? So talk to your SPL before the meeting and remind him that or her that those are those are issues that can really sidetrack your your PLC or your annual planning meeting, right? If, if Tim and, and John are, sorry, John's are over here talking about, you know, what happened at school yesterday, well, the rest of you are trying to make a plan and now all of a sudden they're not involved and they're not, they're not buying in or they're not adding their input and you go to do something. And then they're like, we don't want to do that. That's a dumb idea. Well, they weren't, they weren't engaged. So try and try and eliminate that with some ground rules. All right. So your annual plan, um, I, I kind of broke this down. You want a big picture discussion, right? So when, when we talk uh, before, before the meeting and sometimes during the meeting, they'll ask me questions, but you know, when are we going to summer camp? You know, that's a big piece of our piece of our, our, our schedule, right? That's one of the big things we want to get scouts excited for and get them in, involved in. Right. Um, what council events are we going to attend? You know, um, Weeblos Woods has always been important to me, right? It's a chance for you as a troop to engage with packs, right? Huge. So, so maybe you mentioned, hey, I'd really like to see us go here. You can't force them, but it makes a big difference. Klondike, whatever you guys are into, that's what you want to put in there, all right? Then, uh, and I'm guilty of this, I kind of screwed this up, but High Adventure National Jamboree, um, any kind of big trips that are happening, you should probably be aware of them and not schedule your summer camp week, sorry, Jen, over the same time when some of your scouts might be at High Adventure, right? Uh, big mistake on my part this year, um, but it's, it's a learning experience, right? I learned from it. And now it's going to be kind of a question that comes up, but, but those are things you need to kind of schedule around other things that happen. No act. Um, uh, you, you could have, um, scouts participating in OA events. Um, so those are kind of things you want to kind of have in, in your, in your big picture discussion with your troop or with your SPL before it, uh, before the PLC meets to kind of say, Hey, these are things that are going to happen. Make sure you're aware of them as you do your plan. All right. And they can be part of your plan. Hopefully they are. All right. Um, so then I, then I, I say, okay, you know, a good, good step is to brainstorm, right? Don't, don't worry about what are we doing March 15th? Because that's kind of hard to, to pinpoint in August or even a April. Right. So what are the big ideas? What do you guys really want to do? Right. Um, and then, you know, you, you, you kind of remind them, you know, we, we need to do some outdoor camping. We need outdoor adventure. We need uh, ideas of places to go, um, service projects, right? What can we do for our community? How can we, how can we engage and, and be part of it? Um, perhaps you have fundraisers you're involved in, um, you know, those kind of things, or maybe there's a new fundraiser that somebody knows of we should try. So um, let them brainstorm ideas of, of what they want to participate in, all right? And then, then I made up this little acronym, but it, it's a review, right? So now we're going to run it through, through, through the plan, right? What do we need for prerequisites to do this, right? If we're going to high adventure and we're going to go, you know, uh, let's say we're going to go to the Boundary Waters as a, as a troop and, and do that. Well, what do you have to have? You have to have a aqu aquatic certification. Do you have to have, you know, what, how, what ages do they have to be? depending on what trip you're taking, you know, so run it through those guides to safe scouting, right? What are the rules? Um, we want to build, build a trebuchet. Well, can we do that? You know, let, let's look it over. All right. Is there enough time to pull this off? That's the one thing that I think uh, we all struggle a little bit with, but, but scouts particularly think you can just pack on Saturday and go on Sunday or pack on Friday night and be ready to go. Friday after school to be ready to go at five o'clock, right? So is there enough time to prepare to do these things? And again, we're not trying to find fault. We're trying to find remedy. So we're, we're trying to find, 
find the, the pieces that could catch us and how do we prevent that, all right? So then, then we're going to look at leadership. Is there a youth leader willing to take the ownership of the outing, right? Because this is this is a struggle sometimes in everything, even with adults. But, but hey, you know it would be really cool? Let's go uh, to the Apostle Islands and kayak. Okay, okay, how do we do that? Who wants to look into some of the logistics? Crickets, right? I just want to do that. I don't want to have to do any work for it, right? So, so follow up with your youth and say, okay, who wants to take ownership of this and work with, with Mr. Madsen on this or whoever, whoever the leader is. All right. Um, adult support, right? <laughs> so you, you may have six boys willing or dying to go scuba training, but if you don't have adults willing to, to take them or participate or do the pieces that they want to do, how do we do that? You know, do we have drivers to take us, you know, eight hours away for an adventure, right? That's, that's vacation days for adults. So make sure your, your, your youth are thinking about what kind of adult support they need for activities. And then I, I put in navigable, right? Is it really something we can do? Um, are we, are we ready to do that? Or is it something where we have to say, Hey, this is a two year plan or, a, or a, a, a six month plan, whatever it may be. Here's the steps we need to take to make sure we're ready to do that. So kind of like a smart goal thing. All right. Okay. So in addition to our, our outings and, and those kind of things, when I, when we're doing our annual plan, um, we look at monthly planning, right? So it's hard to plan every meeting every, every week in, in one, one meeting, right? But it's good to come up with themes for outings, um, service, court of honor, right? Um, you should be scheduling your court of honor. So that's an easy one to say, Hey, uh, we need to have three of these this year or four of these this year. So pick which months you're going to do it. You know, uh, it's nice for the advancement chair to do one after summer camp, but don't do it right away after summer camp. Right. Uh, they got to have a few, few minutes to get everything together. Right. So, um, think of those things as you're doing your, your, your monthly planning, right. Themes. Um, there's a lot of themes you can use. Um, our theme this month is geocaching. So we've been doing some geocaching. Um, you first aid, uh, personal fitness, personal management. Uh, and when you think of these themes and outings as they come up with ideas, remind them as you try and put them to a month, <laughs> think about weather and, and other conditions that may affect them, right? It's hard to do swimming in, in January unless you're in a public pool, right? Or an indoor pool. Um, so, um, and then the final piece would to be to present it to the adult leaders in the committee. Here's our plan. Here's what we'd like to accomplish. Can it be done? All right. And that's a big step that, uh, you know, usually our adults are participating in it. So it may not be a, a big formal presentation, but it may be a, a discussion at the end of, hey, this is what we've come up with. How do we do this? Now, there could be lots of interaction during during the PLC with, with adults. That's okay. But in the end, we want to have them kind of say to us, hey, this is how we vision the year coming out. And then as a committee and adult leaders, again, our job is to, to provide the resources or the guidance that they need to accomplish what they're looking to do. All right. Um, action items. So this is something I took from a business meeting several years ago. Um, and I, I've, I've shared it with other troops. Um, but we're all very good at, at sitting down and saying, yeah, I can do that. No problem. I'll, I'll take care of that. Um, and if you can imagine the mind of a teenage boy, I, I haven't dealt with, well, my daughter's pretty, pretty put together when it comes to some of this stuff, but, but, uh, you can imagine the mind of a teenager. They're really willing to help. And then they get home and so-and-so is texting them or this happens or that happens. And the next thing you know, they've kind of forgot even what they were supposed to do or when they were supposed to do it. Right. So I just created this action item, uh, form and I gave one to the scribe, right? And said, okay, your job is to write down everybody's action items, right? And then each person gets one and they can write down what they're supposed to do. All right. And it's got just a, a completion date. Why am I doing the task? What is the task I'm supposed to do? And who is responsible? In most cases on your own, it's you, right? But if you're SPL, you may be writing down everybody's action items so that you can follow up, right? It's a simple tool. Um, it could be electronic. Um, you could have them put, you know, remind them to put stuff in their, in their phone, however they want to do it. But it's just a reminder that, that I, I feel in personal experience and many other things, 
when you write it down on paper, it sticks in your head better than it ever did if you're just trying to remember everything. Now, granted, teenagers remember everything because they're very smart, but this this is possible. All right. So just another tool. Um, if anybody would like a copy of it, I can certainly share it. Um, I'll share the slides with anybody that wants it after two. Okay. So we've done an annual plan, right? Let's follow up with it, right? Uh, so how do we assess whether our, our plan was successful, right? So did, did we have an agenda? Were all patrols allowed? Were they, were they included? Were they, were they part of it? Or was it just one person designing everything? Uh, did we assign tasks to individuals or patrols? Uh, were necessary resources for troop activities considered? Um, were tasks spread evenly among the patrols or individuals? Uh, small troops, especially um, mine, very guilty of it sometimes is we put a lot on the SPL and then they take a lot of work and do it themselves and it doesn't get spread out. And that, that's troublesome, right? So we got to make sure that we're, we're spreading some of the responsibility out. Um, and, you know, in an annual plan, was a, a specific schedule plan for upcoming events? Did we did we plan a year? Do we have a scouting year? You know, maybe maybe a couple dates aren't solidified. Maybe uh, there's a few things that we don't have right. But did we come out with something? Um, did the group come to a concession consensus on handling problems or or disagreements? You know, or is everybody in limbo because they don't know? You know, and the last one was the calendar created. In in our case, that's super important. So. Other resources that that are out there that I think are pretty cool. Um, there's a there's a patrol leader council um, that just talks about it. This um, introduction to leadership skills for troops is something you can actually present in your troop. Um, very good tool. Um, kind of gets them thinking. It's it's really nice when you kind of kind of get new leadership or you're you're getting close to new leadership. Um, usually traditionally it takes, I think there's three parts that we've broken it into for our troop, but it's kind of like, uh, an introduction to leadership skills. And it kind of gets them thinking about some of the things that, that make a good leader, um, and, and how to, how to work it together. You know, um, the scouting aims and methods, you guys heard those. Um, and then this program features, let's see if that'll share. Um, so the program features used to be a book. Actually, it used to be two books. And it's still, oh, it's a three-volume set. I'm apologizing. Um, but it has different themes and different meeting ideas. So if you provide that to your scouts, it's kind of cool. There's 48 theme modules to help make program planning easier for troop leaders. Um, and they, they've got different things in them. You can, you can read through them. Uh, I've read through them. I have the PDF. Um, but they also have them kind of broken down here. So you can kind of kind of see that there's so many little things you can do. And if you give these to your, your troop leadership, your scout leadership, um, they can use them themselves as opposed to you saying, hey, this month, let's do citizenship, right? <laughs> so if you give them these tools or even even maybe give them to them before your planning meeting so they can kind of peruse them, they may bring some, some ideas back. Um, we get caught, at least uh, my experience as a scout and a and uh, and the leader is we get caught in we do first aid we do orienteering or GPS and then we do knots and then we do first aid and then we do you know we can get caught in a, in a loop of of doing very similar things over and over again and there's there's a million things you can do in scouting so so um, it's kind of a neat neat resource there uh, uh, this is this is just about a troop meeting um, good tools to provide to your PLC. Um, this is just how to break down the meeting, a pre-opening, opening, group instruction skills. Um, and it's got the meeting planning page that I provide usually to my SPL before the meeting. Um, a lot of times when from our annual plan, we'll break out and say, okay, you know, in August when we have our PLC, we need, you know, and sometimes it's a patrol, sometimes it's an individual to, to take the lead on, on a meeting. And so we try to get them to, to meet, meeting plan not always successful, but it, it, it's a tool at least that they have in their arsenal. All right. I got, I, I didn't put a question slide, but that'll be at the end here. Uh oh, and there it is. So you want to know more about, about uh, leadership, about guiding youth, PLCs, how a troop works, how a pack works. I strongly encourage you to take wood badge. Um, it's an advanced leadership pro, uh, training for adults. It gives you a lot of, of tools to your arsenal. 
It helps you network with other troop leaders to help them understand um, uh, so you can bounce ideas off of them and, and gain more information. So just suggesting that. Um, I know everybody that's on the meeting right now has been to Wood Badge, but if you're watching a recording, I highly encourage you to, to consider going. Um, the dates are there. Uh, the council office will be happy to help you. I'll be happy to help you. Uh, Mr. Dave Matson will be happy to help you. So just reach out to somebody, actually anybody um, in the troops or packs may have heard of it so they can connect you with us to get you there. So uh, that's it for my presentation. Uh, it was fast, I know. Uh, I'm open to questions or discussions. If anybody would like to chip in what they may do in their troop that's a little different or um, any questions that you might have that I might be able to answer.